there were issues that I used to, uh, there were situations that I, I, I used to do with the, uh, with my collectors or the collectors that I would interact with. Uh, if they were just beginning to get into the, the world of collecting, I would caution them to uh, go into it very carefully and to inform themselves, to look, to build up their, what we in the art world call their eye, by just going around and going to shows, not attempting to judge what they see, but just absorb it. And uh, over a period of time, intense, of this rather intense commitment, if they went along with it, they would develop their own knowledge about what art is, and uh, then uh, they would be in a position to, uh, you know, to start to buy things instead of just jumping out and thinking of art as mostly an investment and what have you, which was always an attitude that horrified me, that I, I would, uh, if I had a sense that, that uh, people were buying art as an investment, I would say to them, you know, there are better investments you can make, go buy gold or jewelry or what have you, but you know, art isn't really, or it should not be about that. And that may have been destructive to my own development and financial well-being because I really stuck to that. People would walk out of my gallery with their mouth open. Did I hear what I just heard? This guy doesn't want to sell me any art. I said, don't buy anything for a year. Come back and we will talk. And it, ha it worked in, in some cases. You know, I was instrumental in really developing some very interesting collections. Not all came through that path, but there were the great collectors like the Tremaines, uh, Panza, etc., uh, whom I had the privilege of working with for years, uh, a lot of respect. They taught me a lot. So there's like two sides of, of, of the coin speaking there.